We can separate different RNAs by differences in size, and this is done by sucrose density gradient centrifugation. But basically, you have a tube, it's usually a plastic tube, in which you have set up a gradient of sucrose. Sucrose is highly soluble in water. You can make a sucrose solution that is 20% or even 40% sucrose. That means, for 40%, means you can take 40 grams of sucrose and dissolve it in 100 milliliters of water. That's a very concentrated sucrose solution. And you can make a gradient in which the bottom of the tube has high concentrations of sucrose and then gradually, as you look at the further and further to the top of the tube, there's less and less sucrose concentration. Under centrifugal force in an ultracentrifuge, what will happen is a bunch of molecules like this RNA sample here layered on top will move through this gradient and experience increasing resistance to moving towards the bottom of the tube as it encounters sucrose of higher concentration. Under ultracentrifugation, different sizes or different masses of RNA will experience differential resistance. So only the largest RNA molecules will be able to penetrate the highest concentrations of sucrose. So let's see what happens as a result of a centrifugal spin of a tube like this containing a sucrose gradient. You get a separation of blue material, which in this case represents different size classes of RNA. In the real world, when we do this, it's in a plastic tube, and we puncture the bottom of the plastic tube so that we can drip material out of the tube and collect it in a series of test tubes fractionating the gradient. So we've centrifuged at high speed in an ultracentrifuge to affect this size separation, and now we've fractionated different RNAs that might have separated into tubes, and we can analyze each tube for the amount of RNA that's present. So remember, the material collected from the bottom of the tube right after centrifugation is going to be the larger molecules, and then they get progressively smaller. So now we can take the information about how much RNA is in each tube and plot this on a graph. And what you see here is the plot of a fractionation of total cellular RNA. Well, the top one is bacteria and the bottom one is eukaryotic RNA. And what you see if you measure the amount of RNA in every tube is, is that there are three different size classes of RNA in bacteria and eukaryotes. Eukaryotic RNAs are a bit larger, uh, having a larger number, this 28S, 18S, and 4 to 5S whereas bacteria have RNAs the size of 23S, 16S, and 4 to 5S. The S stands for Svedborg, who developed the procedure of ultracentrifugation to do this kind of thing. The numbers are a calculation based on the radius of the centrifuge rotor and the, the position of material in the gradient, so you don't have to know all that. But basically, each band that you saw in the centrifuge tube can be shown to have a certain mass, which is related to this Svedborg unit. So we have 23S, 16S, and 4 to 5S bacterial RNA, and 28, 18, and 4 to 5S eukaryotic RNA. This is RNA extracted from whole cells, without regard to where the RNA might have come from. Okay, so those peaks then represent the blue bands on a gradient. So what kinds of RNAs are these? One way to ask this question is to fractionate the cell and ask more specifically, what kind of RNA do you find in the cytoplasm? So let's take a look. Uh, we'll look at the eukaryotic cell in this case because it has a cytoplasm, it has a nucleus, it has organelles, so it actually has compartments we can ask about. And if you take the cytoplasmic RNA, independent of the nucleus, free of the nucleus, it has the same three size classes as the cell as a whole. What that means is the cytoplasm contains largely these three size classes of RNA. Now, if you remember, ribosomes are made up of proteins and RNAs. And so if we extract ribosomes first and then extract the RNA that was in the ribosomes, in other words, disrupt the ribosomes, throw away the proteins, and have only the RNA, if you run that RNA on a sucrose gradient, you get the same three size classes, 28S, 18S, and 4 to 5S for eukaryotes. But if you do this with bacteria, you take whole bacterial cell RNA, which is in, in effect the same thing as cytoplasmic bacterial RNA. You see the 23S and the 16S and the 4 to 5S that we saw in the last slide. If you now take ribosomes and fractionate those ribosomes and do the same analysis, once again you see the same three different size classes for bacteria, 23S, 16S, 4 to 5S. So what do you conclude from the study? Whether it's eukaryotes or prokaryotes, most of the RNA in a cell is ribosomal RNA. 90% of cellular RNA is this ribosomal RNA, the RNA that forms a part of this structure, which of course you know is the protein-making machine of the cell.